Welcome once again to Wednesday Noonday Bible Class at Community Baptist Church in Santa Rosa, California, where our pastor is Reverend Dr. H. Lee Turner. Turner. My name is Brother Jim Kennedy, and Sister Maria Dreyer is the one that types these lessons, so you can follow along, but we thank her for that. Got a good lesson uh, today, and uh, Jesus rose again and gives me right. Thank God for the resurrection. Um, and if you have your Bibles, the passage will be John 20, 1 through 2, and 11 through 18. Um, we'll start off where we got some prayer requests. We want to pray for the sick and shut in and those on our prayer list at Mary Baptist Church. We pray for the sick and shut in, Roy and Barbara Johnson, Hank and Ann Des Darden. Uh, Lanita Marie Johnson, Scott, uh, Scott Aldridge, Harvey Johnson, Nick Carter, Deacon Barnum O'Duncan, Joseph Hampton, Ken and Virginia Sanders, Kim Burgess, Annette Jones, uh, Rhoda Wilsey, Evelyn Cunningham, Georgia Payton, Eloise Arwood, Bonnie Harris, Sharon Rockstead, uh, Michael Peterson Jr., Beverly Combs, Traverse Collins, uh, Leah Beaton, and Michael Gibson. We pray for the family of all those affected by school shooting in Nashville, the Mendine uh, family for physical healing and spiritual guidance, Willie and Grandma Green for uplifting and encouragement, Sister. Uh, um, uh, Michelle McGuire for healing of illness, Sister Elma Kate uh, Greeter for healing and comfort, PJ Absinthe III for spiritual strength and direction, Reverend Kenny Parker for continuous healing from COVID, Brother JJ Bonavito for healing from a traumatic brain injury due to a fall. Brother Joe Allen for continuous healing from illness. Mr. Dra Jacqueline Kemp for physical healing and protection. Pray for CBC staff, Sister Maria Dreyer, Brother Jim Kennedy, Ministries, Reverend Parker, Reverend Francis, and Reverend Sims. Hillary Ministries, teachers and church family. I pray for our pastor, Reverend Dr. H. E. Turner, for uplifting strength and encouragement. We pray for all those prayers for those who will watch and later on. And so we pray that uh, your prayers will be answered according to God's will. Uh, I'll be reading scripture from Isaiah 53. Um, starting at the first word, uh, first verse one. Uh, who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or calmness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by man, a man of sorrow, and acquainted with grief. And we hid as if we, had, uh, and we hid as it were our face from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrow, yet we esteem him, him stricken. Bitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity and chastised for our peace was upon him, and on by his stripes we are healed. All we are like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He is oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before the shears in silence. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, who will declare his generation. For he was cut off from the land of the living from the transgression of my people he was stricken and they made his grave with the wicked but with the rich and his but with the rich at his death because he had done no violence nor was any deceit in his mouth yet it pleased the lord to bruise him 
he has put him to grief when you make his soul an offer for sin and he shall see his seed. You shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall uh, prosper in his hands. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteousness servant shall justify many, but he shall bear their iniquity. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide his form with his strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgression, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgression. And blessing be to the hearing and read of Isaiah 53, 1 through 12. Let's bow our word prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, lesson, Lord, today about uh, your resurrection, Lord. We thank you for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We thank you for salvation in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We praise you. We pray you for all the prayer requests that we lift it up to you, Lord, and we ask that your will be done in each case, Lord. And we thank you once again for this lesson that we learn more about uh, your resurrection and about your life. As uh, we study your word, may it be, uh, may it bless us with uh, your wisdom and your spiritual uh, guidance today, Lord, as we uh, walk this path uh, during our life this day, Lord. We thank you, we give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, session three Jesus rose again. Uh, the point is, Jesus' resur resurrection offers eternal life for me. The passage is John 20, 1 through 2, and 11 through 18. The Bible meets life. My wife, Candace, and I have not been at our current church long when one of our charter members passed away. She was one of the more influential members, so our funeral was a pretty big deal for our church. In preparation to attend the service, Candace was helping our older son to get dressed and ready. As many good moms would do, she was also preparing him on to what to say and do. She told our son about the receiving line and how when it was his turn to speak to the family, he should say, I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, in a mixture of confusion and frustration, he immediately responds with, why should I be sorry? I didn't kill her. We, should, uh, we got a good laugh out of his, his innocent response, but death is no laughing man. This strikes the young and the old, and no one escapes their earthly grip. However, the good news for believers is that it is not the last word. Jesus Christ conquered death, and through faith in him, we have eternal life. Amen. Okay, John 21, 2. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, and it was yet dark unto this uh, scepter, and seeth the stone taken away from the scepter. Then she went and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the scepture, and we know not where they have laid him. <clears throat> Over the course of this study, we have been looking at different encounters with Jesus. He has shown us something powerful and amazing about Jesus. However, the encounter we are studying in this session is perhaps the most amazing. The encounter Mary Magdalene had with Jesus not only transformed her life, but it can also transform ours. At church, we occasionally sing a beautiful hymn because he lived. I have found that it is loved by both students and people in their 90s. The song speaks of both the power of the resurrection and its impact on our life, and captures the significance of what Mary Magdalene experienced on that Sunday morning. It is the empty grave that makes all the difference. We are unsure exactly when Mary first encountered Jesus, 
But both Mark and Luke tells us that she was possessed by seven demons and Jesus cast them out. Mark 6, 69 and Luke 8, 9. It was clear that this early encounter changes her life, for she became a follower of Jesus, often traveling with him and his disciples in their ministry. Mary had a lot to be thankful for, but she, uh, uh, so it is uh, no wonder she felt the need to get uh, to the tomb early in the Sunday morning, on that Sunday morning. <clears throat> When the Sabbath was over and before the sun had even risen, she made her way to the tomb. Other women accompanied Mary in Mark 16, 1. Let's look at that, Mark 16, 1. Mark 16, 1. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, uh, and Salome, were brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. So that's who we were doing. But the gospel writer John focused on Mary's encounter with Jesus, and that encounter began with the discovery that something was out of place. The stone had been rolled away. I had a uh, suit, suit made in college who was extremely particular about the way he kept his room. He did not like anyone to go into the room or touch any of the, his things. If he left for the weekend, he would vacuum the carpet or to the door so that he could tell if anyone walked on him. He placed a hot wheel car on his desk, and if anyone opened the door, the car would move. The car would move, and he would know if someone has been in his desk. He always knew when something was out of place. Mary, Mary did not need a hot wheel car at the tomb to know something was out of place. The stone had been moved. John did not give us all the details because this discovery and her report back to the disciples but clear, it is clear that she was not thinking about her the resurrection. Even though Jesus had told the disciples several times that he would be killed and then rise from the dead, those who have seemed to have escaped them. Mary's first thought was that someone has taken the body of Jesus. For her, this was the most realistic understanding of the situation. No one goes to a graveyard except to see someone. No one, no one goes to a graveyard except to see someone raised from the grave. But this is exactly what happened. What question uh, come to mind when you consider an empty tomb? Where is the body? I think. That's by the way. John 12, uh, John 20, 11 through 16. But Mary stood without the scepter, weeping as, and as she wept, she stood down, stooped down, and looked into the scepter. And uh, seeing two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? And she said unto them, Because thou hast taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid it. And when she had uh, thus said, and she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seeketh thou? She, supposing him to be a gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have bore him hence, tell me uh, where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Ramoni, which is to say, Master. When I read this section uh, of the John's Gospel, Psalm 35 always comes to mind. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Mary was crying over the loss of Jesus' body, but her weeping was about to turn to joy as she experienced the, surprising, the surprise of her life. Jesus was alive. And in 2.16, 
And in 2016, I was part of a mission trip to the country of Southeast Asia. I have been to both Africa and Europe several times, but I have never had any desire to go to this part of the world. Frankly, I was not too keen on going at all, but I have been asked by a good and respectful friend. And I didn't want to disappoint him. However, when I arrived, after 20 hours of travel, no one was there to pick me up. I managed to get myself to the hotel. Needless to say, the trip did not start off well, and my attitude was certainly reflecting of those challenges. But by the end of the week, of the week, this after ministering to and training local pastors, my attitude has completely changed. I went back there three times every time. Everything I thought turned out to be the, uh, the opposite. This was Mary's experience. She assumed the worst only to find out the best. Uh, you didn't mention, but it's a, uh, when have you, you, when have you had a color with God that you did not recognize first? That's something you think of. I love the details John gave about what Mary saw when she looked into the tomb. She saw two angels and wife sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet. When the body of Jesus had laid, the angels sitting on both ends uh, were just laid, uh, where Jesus lay would have looked similar to the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. Moses described it this way and make one chairman on one end and the other chairman on the other end. Even the mercy seat uh, shall you make the chairman on the two ends thereof. The chairmen should stretch forth their wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and their faces should look one to another toward the mercy seat and face the chairmen be, uh, chairmen be, Exodus 25, 18 to 20. Just as people of Israel would experience the mercy of God at the temple, we experience the grace of God as we look to the empty grave and the risen Savior. Mary was not sure what to make of what she was seeing. Even when she turned and saw Jesus, she did not recognize him. It was not until he called her by name that she saw him for who he is. There is something powerful about being called by your name. Uh, what I see, the man she had been and seen killed on Friday was now calling your name on Sunday. What are some ways you heard others respond to the resurrection of Jesus? Let's imagine. What Mary thought and felt engaged. What, uh, imagine what Mary thought and felt when she heard the living resurrection of the Lord Jesus called by her name. The space below, right the short journey entry from the perspective of Mary. So we can do that too. John 20, 17 through 18. Jesus saw unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet extended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I have sent him unto my father and your father and to, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had been, that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Touch me not. When we find something of great value, the nature desire is to hold on to it tightly, to cling to it. It seemed from that text that Jesus was debunking Mary was coming across as untouchable. But we know from his ministry that Jesus was very approachable. Jesus was about to ascend into heaven and would no longer be with, with her physically. He did not want her to rely simply on his physical presence. Although he was fully in physical presence, there outside the grave, Mary would now rely on Jesus in a different way as he came to live in her through the presence of his Holy Spirit. It is also interesting that Jesus 
next word were for her to go and share the good news of his appearance with others. The gospel is not for us to cling to like a top secret message meant only for ourselves. Amen. It is to be shared and spread across the entire world. His glory and power are not in limit supply, so that when it is shared, it decreases his portion. In fact, the more we share Christ with others, the more we experience his power and presence in our own life. We have the only message of hope available to humanity, and we ought to be sharing it with others. Amen. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Man, uh, no man comes unto the Father but by me. That's John 14, 6. Now we are ambassadors for Christ, and though God ever did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead and be reconciled to God. 2 Corinthians 5 20. It should not surprise us that the first directive that Jesus gave Mary was to her to go and tell others that she has seen the risen Lord. There is not a more important message in all the world than this one. Another important part of Jesus' statement to Mary was that I ascend unto the Father and your Father, to my God and your God. The distinction between the use of mine and yours is meaningful. Jesus had a unique relationship as only son from the Father, John 1, 14. And while we are not sons of God in that same way as Jesus, yet we are children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, Galatians 3, 26. We have a relationship with the Father through the Son and only through the Son. Notice the immediate response of Mary. Jesus instructed her to go and tell, and she went and told. When Jesus calls us to go, we must go. When he calls us to tell, we must tell. Delayed obedience is disobedience. I recently, I recently, excuse me, I recently took a group of pastors from Ohio on a discovery partnership trip to Europe. The purpose of the trip was to connect the pastors to international mission board missionaries working on the field. It was an incredible trip as we spread, spread uh, out across the city of London and uh, pray. We prayed to walk, evangelize, and serve in a variety of ministries but at capacity. But the best part was spending time hearing about the work that each missionaries were doing. As we decreased our experience, it was clear that talking and taking the gospel from our neighborhoods to the nations had to become a high priority in each of our churches. God called all his followers to be witness, but we did not witness alone. Jesus extends sets of sets the stage for the coming of the Holy Spirit as recorded in the book of Acts. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Acts 1 8. It is the same Spirit who will as well believe today and empower us to share the same message that Mary was sent to tell the disciples Jesus is alive. What steps can our group take to be better witness for Christ? And then live it out. What will you do as a result of this study? Trust Christ. Knowing the truth of the resurrection of Christ is not enough. Committing to him, trusting him by faith turns to the inside front cover of this book where you can read the greatest message of hope that has ever been shared. Talk to someone about your desires to follow the res resurrection Christ. Pray to share. Write down the names of three people who know you, who need to hear the gospel. Pray daily for those three people and ask God for the opportunity to share the gospel with them soon. Go and tell. Pray. 
for our missionaries and consider the possibility of going on a short term mission or a trip. And nothing will increase your fever, fever, fever for seeing people come to um, know Christ more than being part of a short term missionary mission trip. If your church is not planning any trip in the near future, visit the International Mission Board and um, IMB or go and review the short term opportunity listed there. Okay. So that's uh, that. We'll go to the front of the page here. I'll read the poem. It says Every April, Major League Baseball teams run out into baseball diamonds with hope. It is a new season, and this is the year we win the World Series. All through the season, teams and fans begin to accept the reality that this will not be the year for them. Hope is gone. By October, only two of those teams will stand hold on to that hope. But only one team will make it. Meanwhile, the other team are thinking, just wait until next season. We all lose hope, but the biggest thing that kills hope is our sin. Sin of disobedience and rebellion against God leads to death. Unlike baseball, we don't have a next season. This life is it. What hope do we have beyond this life? Jesus Christ did the most amazing thing. He died on the cross to forgive our sins, and God raised him from the dead. Amen. So how does that give you us hope? Jesus removed our sin conquered death, and offered us eternal life. We no longer need to fear death. Rather, we can have sure hope of eternal life in spite of our past sin and failure. To embrace eternal life is to put your faith in Christ. Admit to God that you are a sinner and ask him to forgive you of all the wrong things you have done. Learn from sin that has kept you from God and accept Jesus' gift of forgiveness. And new life, express your repentance and faith by praying something like this. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I believe Jesus died on the cross to forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry for all the wrong I have done and ask you to forgive me. I now accept your gift of eternal life. Thank you for your love, your forgiveness, and new life in Jesus Christ. From this day forward, I choose to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Then share your decision to follow Jesus with the pastor of those in your Bible study group. Get involved in a church that will help you grow in your faith. Be baptized in the expression of your faith. So that's uh, how we by accepting Christ. So um, right there. Christ died for our sins that we uh, have everlasting life with him. So uh, Next, uh, our next lesson will be um, you want to look ahead. It will be the source of temptation. And the passage will be James 1, 13 to 18. Okay, that's next week's lesson. So let's bow our way to pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. Thank you for this lesson. We thank you for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We thank you, Lord, for this time, Lord, that you uh, uh, we spend in your word today, Lord. We pray that it will touch people's heart, Lord, knowing that you came down and died for our sins, Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you for being our Lord and Savior. We thank you for, uh, Lord, your resurrection and you now intervening. Uh, you are the right hand of God. The Father intervening for us. Uh, and do our prayers and supplications, Lord. We pray that, uh, Lord, that you will bless us throughout this day, Lord. And let us be obedient to your holy word, Lord, as we walk this journey of life, Lord, that we continue to, to be a witness for you and, and share the gospel of Jesus Christ, Lord. We thank you. We praise you, Lord, for all you do for us day in and day out. We also lift up those prayer requests, Lord, that were mentioned earlier in the day, those names of people who are sick and shut in us, and also those on our prayer list. So 
We pray also for their prayers for those who are watching, Lord, that might have prayer uh, uh, that we lift them up to you, Lord, and say you will be done. Uh, Lord, that uh, they will be uh, answered according to your will. So again, we thank you, Lord, for it being our God. We praise you and thank you for this day. And we pray this all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So we thank you for watching and have a blessed day.